Hello, and welcome to our latest video study guide. This one is for social studies. It's on the five themes of geography. And our test for this subject will be on Friday, October 2nd, of course, of 2015. So the first material you got for this unit was the basic descriptions and definitions for each of the five themes. Uh, these definitions will be something very close to what you'll see on your test. And just to go through this real quick, the first one we covered was place, which is the characteristics of an area. The two different types of characteristics that we talked about were physical characteristics, and these are things that are found um, in nature that come from nature. So examples would be trees and other land and um, water features, animals, and other things that are created by nature. And the second category is human characteristics, and these are things that are found on the land, mostly permanent structures. I know buildings can be destroyed, um, but uh, large structures, vehicles are kind of a sketchy one. We talked about that a little bit, but mostly the buildings and other monuments that you see on the land would be considered to be human characteristics. That would also consider some cultural characteristics, especially language, which is something that is developed over time by humans. The second one we covered was human environment interaction. And this discussed how humans affect and are affected by the environment around them. And the three basic questions we answered, how do people depend upon their environment? So what is in the environment that they need? How do people adapt or change because of their environment? So what does the environment do to them that causes them to change? And then how do people change the environment around them? And unfortunately, a lot of the examples we probably think of right away are negative examples like pollution, cutting down trees or cutting down too many trees. Um, but there are also some positives, which would be planting trees and also recycling and taking care of trash and cleaning up water as well. The third topic we discussed was location, and this is where something can be found. And there's two basic ways we do that. The first is the one we use much more often, which is relative location, which is when you're just describing where something can be found. And the other one is absolute location, which is when you're giving specific coordinates using latitude and longitude. And this is something that is only really used by pilots and people who are on submarines and things like that, people who need to know exact locations on a map, which we very rarely, very rarely need to do. Our fourth topic was region, which is something you talked about a bit last year. This is when we're dividing up an area based on certain characteristics. So if those characteristics are land features or water features, we would call that type of region a physical region because it's based on physical features. And those are the ones you talked about last year with your five regions of Virginia, which we'll get to in just a moment. The political regions, which are uh, defined by political boundaries and divisions between states and countries. And then cultural regions, which we usually find within cities like a Chinatown or a Little Italy, or sometimes economic places like Wall Street. And the last one we talked about was movement, and that's the way people, products, information, and ideas move from one place to another. And that changes a lot over time. The three basic questions we need to answer, where are these goods or people or ideas starting? Where are they going to be going? And how are they getting there? And that how are they getting there is really what changes over time. 200 years ago, really the only way to get things anywhere would have been by horseback or by boat. And now, of course, we have planes and trucks and everything else. And as far as information is concerned, it was very hard and very slow to send information over long distances. And now we can do that in a matter of seconds with things like email and texting and stuff like that. The second paper you got for this is the actual paper copy of the study guide. And both of these papers are found on the website. And this goes through the breakdown of the test, which I'll go over a little bit later in this study guide. This is a color copy of the chart that is found on the back of your study guide. It's a little bit easier to see than the one that's probably in your notebook. And it goes through the five themes in a little more description. It gives basically the same definitions that we talked about. But it gives some examples as well. Things like coal mining as an example of human environment interaction. There's two examples of absolute location and relative location. In this case, using a gas station to describe the location, which is perfectly fine. Some examples of region, like the savanna, which we generally find in places like Africa, and the Arctic, which are up in the northern part of the world. And pretty soon in science, we'll be talking about the ocean and the Great Barrier Reef, and that is an example of a place. So here are some basic questions that we need to answer when we're looking at the five themes. And they go in a slightly different order than we did, but we'll start with the first one we talked about, place, what is it like? So if I go to this place, what am I gonna see? And then what are the physical and human features of this place? 
They shortened human environment interaction to just interaction for this one, asking how do people adapt, meaning change to their environment, and how do people change their environment, which is things we talked about. Location, where is it, finding it on a map, and then where did it happen if we're talking about events of the past. Region, so what uh, physical features are similar in the area and what human features are similar in the area. And political boundaries, like dividing states and things, are actually considered to be human features because it's done by people. And then movement, why and how do people travel from place to place? And how do people exchange goods and ideas? And that exchange of ideas is what we spent a lot of time talking about. So just to see some examples of place, what we have here is Mount Rogers, which is the tallest point in Virginia. And as you might guess, this is a, there's a lot of physical characteristics in this picture, from the trees to the rock formations. You can see some of the wildflowers that are down kind of in the middle of the, uh, the photograph. There's some hiking trails, which might be sort of considered to be a human characteristic. But for the most part, almost everything in this picture is going to be considered a physical characteristic because they're created and they are products of nature. And this is pretty much the exact opposite. Here we have New York City and the Empire State Building up front and center there. But almost everything you see in this picture, aside from the water features, are going to be human characteristics. These are things that are built by human hands. To kind of take a look at a unique example, here we have a mountain, and pretty much everything you see in this picture is a physical characteristic. But this mountain was changed, and it was changed by humans, and now this mountain looks like this. And clearly the carvings of the faces of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and Teddy Roosevelt and Abraham Lincoln are examples of human characteristics because this was done by humans. So Mount Rushmore is actually kind of both a physical and a human characteristic. Taking a look at human environment interaction. This could be everything from ancient Egyptians having to adapt to the flooding of the Nile to residents of Florida having to prepare themselves for hurricanes. And if you've ever seen houses that look like this near the beach that are kind of on stilts, there's a reason for that. And that's because of hurricane season, because of flooding and trying to avoid uh, massive flooding in the homes. So they raise their homes up to make sure that any water goes underneath. That's an example of human environment interaction. That's a change that humans have had to make because of the weather. The extreme example that we talked about in my class was the Cuyahoga River in Ohio, which actually went up in flames because of the amount of pollution that was in the river. Again, kind of an extreme example. But there are some positives as well, and that's we see that most often in the way we dispense our trash. And you can see here a basic recycling center. Everything from glass and plastic aluminum bottles and containers to plastic bags. And you see all the way in the end there, MP3 players and cell phones and ink cartridges, which are an example of recycling technology. We then take a look at location. And we can find exact location by using lines of latitude and longitude. And using those lines, and we also talked about possibly using minutes and seconds, which is way more exact than we'll ever need to be, and more, more likely than not, unless you end up flying a plane or being on a submarine or something. But using those coordinates, we can find pretty much any location on the globe, either in the northern or southern hemisphere, or in the eastern or western hemisphere. And remember that there, every point on Earth is in two of those hemispheres, either north or south, and then also either east or west. If I was going to use just regular location, or relative location, I should say, I could use other countries or other points of interest to describe where things can be found. So if I want to say the capital of Colombia is Bogota, I've kind of used relative location because I've explained that Bogota can be found in Colombia. If I want to describe where Paraguay was located, I may say that it is northeast of Argentina. I could describe Chile as being a narrow nation along the coast of the Pacific Ocean. And those are all examples of relative location. Region, and the one you guys talked about last year and sung about and everything else, these are divisions amongst larger pieces of land, makes it a little bit easier to study. And these are the geographic regions of Virginia, so Appalachian Plateau and Valley and Ridge and Blue Ridge and Piedmont. 
in the coastal plain. And the reason why we divide these into different regions is because it makes it easier to study because each, each of these regions are different. There are different products that come from them. The land looks different. Some are very close to water. Some do not have as many water features. So to make it a little bit easier, we divide the state of Virginia into these regions. We also divide the country into regions. These are examples of political regions, and they have five on this map. And we call them political regions because they're divided based on the shapes of the states. And the shape of a state is actually determined by people, usually governments, which would make it politicians, which is why we call it political regions. We also talked about cultural regions, and this is the whole house map that showed the different cultures and the different nationalities that were living in a section of Chicago in 1888. And because it's based on ethnicities and nationalities and languages, that makes these cultural regions. Our fifth and final theme was a theme of movement. And this could be everything from the Susan Constant, which you guys learned about last year, moving people and goods back and forth across the ocean, to modern day airplanes, which can move people or goods. We also talked about the movement of information, in this case, a printing press. This is actually a model of the first printing press, which allowed people to make many, many copies of paper, and newspapers and letters and things like that and share them much, much easier instead of having to write them by hand. And that's an example of sharing ideas. And of course, the one we talked about also is the phonograph, which recorded sound and allowed sounds and people's voices and music and everything else to be shared over great distances. So again, these are the initial notes that we got for your test on Friday. Part one is going to be matching the theme to the definition. And we did an exit ticket for this earlier this week. And it's going to pretty much look exactly like those. So give a look for those on your, in your Thursday folders. And this way it'll help you get ready for Friday. Part two is going to talk more about the specific parts. So, for example, for the theme of location, part two will ask you about relative location and absolute location. It will ask you about physical characteristics and human characteristics. And just ask some more specific questions about each of the themes. Part three is going to be scenarios. So they'll be very short little stories. And you're going to read the story and try to determine which theme is being talked about in the story. And two people may read the same story and think of a different theme, and that's fine. Most of your points and most of your credit for those questions is going to come from your explanations. And the same thing is true for part four, which will uh, involve looking at a picture and trying to figure out which theme of geography you see in that picture. And again, most of your points are going to come from explaining what you what it is you see and why you think that uh, theme is present in that photo. Only one thing ready to do, and that is to be ready and to do your best. And if you really are concerned about where these pictures came from, there you go. Good luck. <laughs>